name is Corey Van Zyfeld, and I'm a historic interpreter at the Littleton Museum. Today I am joining you from our 1890s house pantry. The reason I'm joining you from in here is I want to talk to you about ice and ice cream, and there's a couple items in here that are very relevant and important to making ice cream. To begin with, in the 1890s, ice cream was consumed all year round. In the summer, it would be, ice would be packed away in an ice house, it would be stacked very tall, and in between it would have layers of sawdust and straw, and that would actually keep the ice frozen throughout the summer. And an ice man would come to your house and he would deliver ice to your ice box, which we have our ice box right here. And he would put the ice in here and that would keep your food fresh. Now, the ice man would literally take it and deliver it into your house. And he would know how much ice you need by the sign. You would put this sign into one of your windows and the ice man would look and see, okay, today you need maybe 50 pounds or 25 pounds. And he would take the amount of ice and bring it into your ice box, put in your ice box. And in the winter time, you could use the ice and the snow right outside your back door to make ice cream. And in the 1890s, people would use it to freeze the ice cream, but then they would also make ice cream from the snow. And then when you're making ice cream, you could use a big ice cream churn like this. They still make these today. And if you're lucky enough to have one, you can use one of those. I, however, will show you a way to make ice cream that doesn't require a churn. Let's head over to the kitchen and I can show you how to do that. Today, I will be making what in the 19th century was called a mousse. It was basically a frozen whipped cream um, that was categorized as an ice cream. And the reason I'm showing this to you today is because if you don't have an ice cream maker at home, this is something that you can easily make on your own. And I will be making a pistachio mousse today. To make it, I will start with my whipped cream, my heavy whipping cream. I will add some sugar to that. And then I will add some vanilla extract, as well as some almond extract. And so the almond and vanilla flavoring is what imitates or replicates the pistachio flavor. To make it green, I have been, I boiled some spinach in some water, and then I let it sit overnight in the water. And that will hopefully make our ice cream turn a little bit green to mimic that pistachio color. So I'll just pour some of that in there. In the 1890s, I could use spinach um, or I would have access to spinach all year round in, by growing it in a cold frame, which is basically a little greenhouse that you could grow certain plants in. So even though it's the middle of February, when I'm filming this, I could easily have access to spinach. Now begins the part, the, most, the hardest part, and that's to whip my cream. At home, you can use your own blender or not blender, uh, mixer, something like that. But I will do it by hand. My whipped cream is all done. As you can see, I have nice firm or nice loose peaks going there. What I'll do now is wrap this up in newspaper so it's nice and tightly sealed. Then I'll put that in another bowl filled with ice and rock salt and make sure it's packed all the way around this. Once that's done, I will let this sit for a good long while, a couple of hours. Um, if I have an ice box, um, put it in the ice box if there's room. If not, you can just put it away in a nice, cool, dark, cool place and let it freeze. I've let my ice cream sit um, in the ice for about a few hours, three or four hours, and it's nice and frozen. And I will serve some onto my bowl. 
One thing about the 1890s is that the people, the Victorians, loved fancy food. And one thing that they would do is if they had them, they would actually put the ice cream into molds. And these molds were three-dimensional. So they were two pieces and they would, let's say you had a heart. So you'd have the heart shape on each side and there was a hinge in the center. And you put a packet full of ice cream on both sides, close it, and then you'd freeze it that way. And then once it was frozen, you could serve it. You'd serve it at a party or just your general every day. And that was how they would eat it. I unfortunately don't have a mold. So that's where I resorted to my bowl. But let's give this ice cream a try. As you can see, the spinach didn't really turn it very green. It's still very yellow. Um, I guess that was the best they could do without having the, you know, the how the safe food, um, food dye that we have today. So let's give this a try. It's very creamy, obviously. It was made out of just cream. Um, but it's good, it's not icy at all. I would say this is a really good way to make ice cream if you don't have an ice cream maker. It just takes a little bit of work, um, arm work, if you don't have a mixer, but if you do, it's quick and simple. Just freeze it for a couple hours and then you're done. So thank you for joining us um, as we explored ice cream. Please visit our website, the City of Littleton website, and then on the museum, Littleton Museum page, um, and look for this recipe and any other information that we may have provided for you. Uh, thank you so much for joining us.